This is episode 288, recorded October 9th, 2015. Packard pokes at Westboro Baptist Church, always putting feet in their mouths. I want to thank 12RN from the chat room for this week's show title. What time is it? It's Packard folks at time. Hat? Check. Shirt? Check. Pants? Optional. Mug? Double check. Check us out at cafepress.com slash Packard folks at where you can get all this great merchandise and more. Do you like Packard Pokes at and want to hear it on demand and on the go? Download the free app today at Stitcher.com. Available on iOS, Android, Nook, and iPad. This is Packard Pokes at and I'm poking at your news. Your news. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another fine edition of Packard Pokes at. I am your immutable and unmutable host, Packard Sonic, and this is the month of October. <laughs> and joining me from the far west coast is Connie Practical Magic 9. Yes, and whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? <laughs> I hear it's the mash now. <laughs> the monster mash? The monster mash. <laughs> it's a graveyard smash. <laughs> they lie. My twist was better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Got me right when I was drinking a little bit of water there. <laughs> and, and it didn't come out your nose. No, it did it, not come out my nose. My that... evil plan is thwarted yet again. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm done talking like I'm Dracula. You must want me to talk like this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that for for uh, the end of the month. <laughs> <laughs> Right now we need more brains. Now we need more brains. More <laughs> brains. What the hell are we doing here then? <laughs> <laughs> the GOP clown car has no brains. <laughs> well, it's definitely free of zombies then. <laughs> I was going to say, zombies like, oh, God, we're going to starve to death. <laughs> Back in 2012, the city of Oklahoma did something really fucking stupid. They decided that, hey, let's put up the monument for the Ten Commandments. And they didn't realize it at the time, but they opened the floodgate for every religion at that point. And they're thinking that, oh, no, just because we had private funds, therefore we can only put up our religion. And just... The other day, on October 6th, the monument has come down finally. Under the cover of night, the six-foot-tall granite monument inscribed with the Ten Commandments was removed from the Oklahoma City Capitol grounds after the judges said its placement on government land violated state law. And that judge actually had it correct. Governor Mary Fallon, a Republican, said that she was looking for a way to return the monument to Capitol grounds, which is really fucking retarded. The Satanist group out there said, hey, if you're going to put up this uh, monument, we want to put up one of Baalmeth. And religitards out there lost their fucking minds over this. They said, no, you can't do that. And they fucking decided, they finally came to the right conclusion that this was not legal. And she goes on to say, I believe the people of Oklahoma should have the opportunity to vote on a proposed constitutional change to ensure that the historical monuments like this are not pushed out of public spaces. I strongly encourage lawmakers to take up this issue in the next legislative session. First off, it's not historic. There is no history here. It's just a bunch of words based on a book. By that same token, we could put up a bunch of stuff like from fucking Harry Potter as well. And if they want to say this is a historical document, then they could put up this other stuff just as easily too. But the thing is, when they took this down, from what I understand, they had to take it down with heavy guard because Christians, when they find out that they can't put up their very religious stuff in public places, they lose their fucking minds and they try to stop the workers from doing their job. Another part of this is it cost them well over $5,000 to remove this atrocity. But it doesn't say in the article here where they got the funds to do that. 
Kind of your thoughts. Uh, actually, the original monument, which was run over by a car in a, a year ago, uh, was funded by a private person. It was funded by State Representative Mike Ritz. Uh, R-I-T-Z-E. Uh -huh. uh, he sponsored a bill to have a monument to the Ten Commandments installed at the Capitol, and his family supplied $10,000 to fund the monument, which was installed in late 2012. Right. And uh, when the original monument was uh, run down um, in 2013 or 14, I, I think it was 14, uh, they had another one commissioned. Now, here's the scuttlebutt about the replacement, though. The replacement monument hasn't been, basically was fronted by the company that created the monument, and they haven't been paid a dime on the second monument really? at all. Yeah. Uh, and I guess that when that came to light and people were starting to be questioned about that, State Representative Mike Ritz said, well, we're, we're going to get a fundraiser to pay for the second monument oh, so geez. not only is the monument five thousand dollars to take it down and it's sitting somewhere else it has it hasn't even been paid for at all by private donations and when you mentioned how the the satan satanists had a statue of bahamut when when the original monument came down uh when it was when it was torn i mean it was uh, run over uh they withheld putting up the statue of bahamut because they said well uh, that's not going to be, we, we don't want that to have to be the only thing that's sitting there. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't what they wanted to say. Um, so, I mean, kudos to them. But yeah, I know that the the uh, governor of Oklahoma is trying to figure out some way that she's going to be able to get this put back up there. They're trying to take out the wording in the law that uh, says that, yeah, you can't put religious, religious stuff up in public property there's restrictions to say that you know it's basically no holds barred we'll see how how much they really want to play that game though yeah you know the thing that really bothers me is that they think that they can circumvent the constitution by voting on it, putting it up which yeah. is not going to happen and the, the it which, doesn't matter if they vote on it a million times if the if i mean if they want to take it to the supreme court and have them tell them that this is unconstitutional i guess but yeah, that's where I think that's where it's going to have to. Now, one of the things is, which I thought was really funny about this in the article here, it said uh, the lawmakers argued that the monument, which was paid for with public or with private money, and installed in 2012, was not serving a religious purpose, but it was meant to mark a historical event. No, it does not mark a historical event. And I could not determine what that historical event was. It's just that they somebody wanted to put it up. That's mm -hmm. what I don't understand either, Packard. I was trying to find out, well, what event was it was was it marking? And I don't see that. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It yeah. doesn't mean that there wasn't a, an excuse given, right? Reason, but it it just means I wasn't able to figure that out either. You know, and the thing is, they, well, like I, I was about to say, there is that they saw it's not a religious uh, artifact, but it says right at the fucking top there. It says right after it says the Ten Commandments, it says. I am the Lord thy God. If that said, I am the Lord thy spaghetti monster, it would still be a religious item. Actually, the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster wants to put a monument up, too. If they say that this should be able to sit on public, you know, grounds. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the uh, judge told them they had to have it removed by October 12th, and they're a few days ahead of schedule. So, yeah. and, you know, yeah. and the thing is, if this governor wants to have this put on her own personal property... Fucking go put it out on your own personal property. I don't care. But you're not going to put it on state grounds. Yeah. There, there's just no way of getting around it. Any last thoughts on this? Uh, I can't find the name of the pastor who said this, but a Baptist pastor down in Oklahoma said that, well, you know, he he doesn't think that the monument should be on public grounds either. Well, I was like, really? Hmm. You're a Baptist and you're in Oklahoma and you don't think that it belongs there? That's well, that's a, to you. that that's a pastor I could get behind on this. I think that sounds awesome to me. Yes, so. it does. Yes, it does. I guess I was letting my thoughts wander all over the avenue of consideration. Mm -hmm. You almost collided with established dogma back at those presumptions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and tonight we have deconverted man, 
with his one-minute skeptic video. Now, this particular one is just a little bit long. It's almost two minutes long, but I think we'll have some fun with it anyway. If you had just one just minute, one minute, one minute to skeptical. be skeptical, skeptical, what would you do? What would you say? How would you answer the questions? This is the One Minute Skeptic. Are atheists evil? The question is, are atheists evil? Well, atheism has no inherent moral values. Atheism is simply a lack of belief for claims made by religious people due to the overwhelming lack of evidence to validate those claims. Good and evil are completely subjective concepts which have evolved over time, just as humans have, as laws, which still differ greatly, primarily depending on where you live. But religious people argue that morality is objective and only comes from God. Well, what kind of God issues a command not to kill, followed by hundreds of commands to kill for all sorts of petty reasons? Was it moral for Christians to kill millions during the Crusades or slaughter heathens in the lands they conquered because they didn't believe in a deity they'd never even heard of? Is it moral for Muslims to kill all infidels? Give me a break. The truth is religion has caused more mayhem, suffering, and murder than any institution in history. When faced with this indisputable fact, religious people will often invoke the crown jewels of evil atheism. Joseph Stalin, Chairman Mao, and Pol Pot. They'll say, see what happens when atheists run things? But the truth is, if any religion had ever actually proven itself with real evidence, there wouldn't be any atheists. And Stalin and Mao and Pol Pot would have been religious killers instead of evil atheist murderers. So the buck for atheism's very existence really stops with religion, doesn't it? The truth is most atheists have as good or better morals as religious people do. We understand right and wrong inherently and in societal context because our minds haven't been poisoned by superstition, nonsense, and bullshit. This has been the One Minute Skeptic. Connie, what, do you think atheists are evil? <laughs> Only in the best ways. <laughs> <laughs> Human beings have a certain capacity for evil, and that's the truth of it. And religion just likes to pretend that they don't, and they excuse it away or they repent it away. Yeah, at least temporarily. Yeah. I, I, uh, it, I, you know. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you. I no. That go ahead. Okay. I, now I was going to say is, I don't look at things as things are like they're evil because that that's a whole connotation that I, I, I can't even wrap my Correct. whole I can't even wrap my whole mind around the word evil as it is. I mean we say this thing is evil or that thing is evil, but <laughs> what does it really mean? Yeah. I mean right. uh, I, I say that there are people who do things that are not in the interest for everybody and there's people who do the opposite. They will do the interest they think is, you know, that's going to help people. I don't see these people who do the, you know, like the shooters out there. That I don't see him as evil. I just see him as uh, somebody who did something that was uh, morally selfish. wrong. Yeah, yeah, and selfish, yes. Well, at some point, it, and, and just to label selfishness as evil is very vague also. I mean, obviously, in, in that case it is. But at, at some point, it, this is another problem with religion is that selfishness is seen as a thing to be shunned and yet it does protect yourself uh, from people who would harm you mm -hmm. you know to be to take your own best interests at heart if we don't take our own best interests at heart really not everybody else will do it uh, i'm not trying to advocate anarchy like that but uh, by putting a moral injunction on things like that and by being vague you know like selfishness or altruism you know or yeah evil and evil and good are are very vague terms you know right and wrong are more correct yeah uh, you know and and then what is good for the society and what is good for the individual those are all things it and that's what's messy about it mm -hmm. evil is a very subjective word mm-hmm and so is sin, and uh, 
it's it's a bigger conversation than that and we don't do we do a great disservice to the rest of humanity by just saying you know that something is evil is like well yeah uh, can we quantify that please because you know at some sort at the, the societal good and the individual good are things that are probably always in tension with each other but generally it should be the same thing and uh so yeah but yeah it, it and and just to call just to label one group bad or evil because they're not believing in the same deity that you right. do and there's no proof of that uh, again that doesn't do society any good it just because blinders yeah the the reason why i don't like the word evil is because what one person considers something to be evil somebody else would mm -hmm. consider to be good so yes. it, there there's the whole construct there too uh talking primate from the chat room said sin is a man-made construct and he's absolutely correct on that and uh, but it, the yes. topic was evil not sin but they, they kind of go hand in hand yeah. a little yeah, bit just, yeah they kind of go hand in hand well actually you know what we have a commercial <laughs> <laughs> We need these commercials. We'll be back here in just a moment to ruin the rest of the show for you. Contact us by email at ppappodcast at gmail.com or on Twitter as at Packard Folks at. Like us on Facebook.com slash Packard Folks at. Call our Google Voice and leave a message at 662-709-PPAP or 662 709 Seven seven two seven, and we will respond to it on the show Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time. Join us live at vonlive.tv slash Packard Set. During the show, you can share your thoughts with us by calling 857-216-3200 using PIN number 35368 or on uberconference.com slash Packard Set. For links to the stories, visit our show page at packardpokesat.wordpress.com. You can help support the show by purchasing merchandise from cafepress.com slash packardpokesat or make a donation to the show at patreon.com slash packardpokesat. If you can't afford any money, why not share the show with your friends and rate us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Spreaker, and on YouTube. For everyone that shares and rates us, you kick ass. Ladies and gentlemen, every advance of the homosexual agenda comes at the expense of religious liberty. You're very popular in a number of state institutions. <laughs> the... <laughs> One of our new sounds. <laughs> The Westboro Baptist Church has decided to take on a school, and one of the times that they've done this, their boycotts and their protests are being met with a lot of resistance. And when they came against this school, they did not realize what they were in store for. They were pretty much like a cat up a tree at this point. <laughs> <laughs> The Westboro Baptist Church protesters uh, were over at a school in Kansas City and, and Missouri last week when their hate group gathered to protest the recent election of a transgender girl as homecoming queen. The Westboro Baptist uh, Church had showed up to pick at the Oak Park High School on Thursday, October 1st, but they were met with a rally of students gathering to support this transgender girl. She was a homecoming queen. Landon Patterson is her name, and uh, they stood with her. And the Westboro Baptist Church was driven away. That's so much fucking win. This group was classified to be a hate group uh, a while back. Uh, and they're based in Topeka, Kansas. And had regularly st stages uh, high-profile protests known for their featuring God Hates Fags sign. Which I want to get a sign. If they ever came around in my neighborhood, I want to make, I'm going to make a big sign that says, you know, fuck this guy. <laughs> with an arrow pointed over to him. <laughs> a little a little stick man bent over and somebody yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your thoughts, Connie. <laughs> you know, the next generation gives me so flipping much hope. This is this is my youngest children's age. And uh I cannot believe it's just like 
this mob of teenagers swarming the Westboro and getting in their broken ass minivans and driving off, making that poor local sheriff run alongside the car. Oh yeah. I felt bad for him. Uh, yeah, God save the queen. I mean, wait, wait, no, no, that, not God save the queen. But what was their thing they were shouting again? Ah, long live the queen. Oh, Sorry. long live, long the, live queen. the queen. Yay, that would have been ironic. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> long live the queen. And I'm going. Oh, you, you give me so much hope because in Missouri, Oklahoma, we're talking about this Bible Belt, this whole thing. And God, this is so awesome i was like go you go get him i've never seen a a video where they turn tail yeah i I have wbc and have you i i've only seen one other one but that was some professionals like bill maher and somebody else i know it was bill maher but some uh professional uh celebrity went down and was protesting the westboro baptist church where they they got a a truck full of gay guys and they were dancing in front of them they kept uh, dance in front of them so uh, half naked and, and gy- gyrating and shit is like and they finally westboro kind of left at that point there was one other thing they had uh they were counting uh, carrying another sign here and i've just found that it says westboro baptist church needs jesus uh, <laughs> 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 they need to have their heads examined that's what they really need uh <laughs> well, you know what jesus did spend some real quality time with 12 other guys yes he did saying, you know he had women yeah, he had women around him, but his Last Supper, all guys, all guys. Yeah, and there was that one passage where, well, he Jesus, that somebody came across Jesus and a young boy and ran away completely naked. Just saying, hey, it's in there. Don't, don't. <laughs> I, I, I'm not making this up. It's in there. So <laughs> I feel particularly vicious tonight. <laughs> I, I had some Facebook fighting going on, and so I was like. So, yeah. Torvian said from the chat room, he says, I'm about 90 minutes from Westboro Baptist Church. I can smell the bigotry from here. Does it smell like bacon? <laughs> oh, no, don't equate bacon with them. <laughs> I know. That's true. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? <laughs> if, it was ba- if they were bacon, they would be nice. They'd probably be good people, but they're not. They're they're evil. No, that's <laughs> The smell of hate. They're the smell of hate, yes. I think the smell of hate is uh, the smell of skunk and fox mixed together there's a smell that you just don't want to deal with <laughs> <laughs> and everybody that's want to a... make a perfume commercial wbc <laughs> like hate. film it in black and white it smells like hate <laughs> it smells like hate <laughs> <laughs> god i wish i knew how to cut videos better that would be that'd be fun <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Uh, Tor- Torvin from the chair room says, feet is a euphemism for genitals in the Middle East. I didn't know this. Uh, he says, even the, <laughs> even to this day, there was a lot of foot washing in the Bible. I did not I did not know that. That's Thank you, Torvian. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. <laughs> you're going to have to re- you're going to have to send me a reference on that. Not that I don't believe you, but it's like I, I want to have proof. So I can like, just like feet. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Wash my feet. Come here, wash my feet, baby. Chicka wa wa. It's our last supper. <laughs> Let me wash your feet at the last supper. <laughs> <laughs> my feet are dirty again, Jesus. I need to. Oh, <laughs> you are on a roll tonight, Connie. <laughs> I. I told you I had a particularly ugly Facebook discussion. Today. Yes, yes, you did. I'm in a I'm in a particular mood. <laughs> I need I need I got my devil horns on if I believed it. <laughs> Why does everyone keep thinking I'm a troll? Da, 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 da. We have this new segment called True or Troll. I'm going to give Connie just the title of a story that I found online. And she has to tell me if she thinks that this story is a troll story, which is, you know, like an onion type story or a real story just based on the title alone. You can follow along at home. Take your fingers off the Googles, kids, and (laughs) see if you can figure this out on your own. Okay, Connie, you ready? 
I'm ready. All right. Kansas governor wants to teach residents how to prepare for zombies. Is this true or is this a troll? True. That is correct. <laughs> that is true. That is from the they're, Huffington Post. The governor? <laughs> the Kansas oh. governor. <laughs> Okay, unemployed single mother in Rubio's speech told Canada about her problems in confidence. Is this a true story or is this a troll story? Troll. Boy, you're betting a thousand so far tonight. I guess I need to get angry more often. <laughs> yes, make you focus. <laughs> They're making you focus tonight. Yes. All right, next one. Starbucks reveals plans to open chain of gun-friendly cafes. Is this a true story or is this a troll story? Troll. That is correct. That is a troll story. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that was the, that last story from the National Report. The previous one is from The Onion. Uh, and the first one was from the Huffington Post. Okay. Next one. Audit. Scientists in Antarctica prone to alcohol-fueled fights in decent exposure. Is this a true story or... Or is this a troll story? True. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. And that is from UPI. <laughs> well. <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> the penguins are all like going, what? What's going on over there? <laughs> the monkeys are fighting. Uh <laughs> Okay, police in riot gear takes on a black widow spider. Is this a true story or is this a troll story? Troll. Oh, that is a true story. That is from UPI. <laughs> okay. You are doing so well, Connie. I'm sorry. Well, evidently that woman must have had a, who called that called that in must have had some really big Bazungas, right? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. We have to save her. All right. right. Shake it off, Connie. Shake it off. Shake all it right, off. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, McDonald's to pay child support for employees instead of providing raises. Is this a true story or is this a troll story? Troll. That is correct. <laughs> That's from Empire News. Woohoo. Okay. <laughs> We're back on track. Back on track. Corporations don't mm -hmm. pay for diddly shit. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's so very true. That is okay. so very true. All right. A woman sues says rival restaurant stole the secret family recipe. Is this a true story or is this a troll story? True. That is true. That's from ABC News. <laughs> oh, jeez. Nobody else knows about my secret mayonnaise and ketchup mixture. <laughs> Okay, these are going to get a little harder now. Maybe. Right. I don't know. Uh, topless Facebook <laughs> users flood Christian's pastor's inbox with breast pictures for Go Topless Day. Is this a true story or is this a troll story? I want it to be true. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a troll story. <laughs> you to cut me, Mick. Cut me. Get me back in there. Okay, okay. That okay. would be an awesome story, though, if it were true. I know. I know. <laughs> Breast best pastor thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> that was from Christwire.org. <laughs> Christwire? Christwire. <laughs> Go look it up yourself there, folks. Okay. <laughs> All right. Our next story here. Sleeping Idaho hunter wakes up to a black bear biting his head. Is this a true story or is this a troll story? <laughs> true. That is correct. That is a true story. I, I thought you were going to say he fell out of the tree, no. the tree stand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. We only got a couple more left here. Connecticut University students arrested over mac and cheese. Is this a true story or is it a troll story? Troll. No, that one's actually true. That's from Yahoo News. <laughs> Told you this is going to get a little harder. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, okay. The uh, second to last one. All right, get your brains warmed up here. Man protesting death of man beaten to death by police, beaten to death by police. Is this a true story 
Or is this a troll story? I want it to be true. Sad. <laughs> no, it's it's a troll story. It's from new, newsmutiny.com. <laughs> God, okay, okay, okay. I did my training montage. I'm done with okay. the 80s music. I, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. All I'm right, he, here's our last news title. KFC apologizes after customer is handed pot of gravy with the label that reads, fuck off. Is this a true story or is this a troll story? <laughs> true. That is correct. Yes. I think you did about 80% tonight there, Connie. (laughs) Just don't play Eye of the Tiger because we know how that goes. (laughs) We are the champion. No, it's... Although that is better music. It is better music. It absolutely is better music. (laughs) Always go with Mercury. (laughs) All righty. Well, we'll be back next week. Uh, before we get going, though, for this f- la- end of the month topic, we normally don't have an idea what we're going to talk about. But this month, seeing it's Halloween, we want you to send us your scary stories. Make something up or something that happened to you that was really weird. Send it to PPA podcast at Gmail dot com and we'll read them on the air and we'll have some fun with them, too. So it- we would like you to participate. We'll have the, the phones open, and you can tell a quick one- or two-minute story as well. That would be really great. So uh, yes. become, make sure that you make it to the show on Friday. And I'll be looking up for some weird stuff along the way as well so we can, like, make it kind of spooky and shit. So, But uh, yeah. I, it, it just, you know, we, we haven't done anything like that before, so I thought, you know, it, it's our, our end-of-the-month Let's talk segment. So let's let's have a little fun with it. Seeing it is the night of Halloween. Ooh. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week. This has been Packard Pokes that we just poked at your news. And that's a wrap.